My name is Joseph Cavallo, and I'm going to discuss how AI analysis of ultrasound images could decrease the rate of benign breast biopsies. Here is our disclosure statement. Lev Baranoff is an employee of Koyos Medical, and Koyos Medical's AI software was used in our analysis. There are no additional disclosures. Breast cancer screening false positives contribute to unnecessary biopsies and follow-up. This results in patient inconvenience, anxiety, complications, and an annual cumulative healthcare cost of approximately 4 billion US dollars. Any system that decreases the number of unnecessary biopsies while maintaining appropriate sensitivity could improve patient care and decrease healthcare system costs. Ultrasound is a valuable imaging technology for breast cancer screening and further assessment of mammographic findings. This is particularly true in women with dense breasts, where it can supplement traditional mammography and tomosynthesis. Generally, most breast biopsies only have a 20 to 40% positive rate, so there's room for improvement and AI can potentially help. We conducted a retrospective analysis to answer the question of whether an AI diagnostic tool could theoretically help breast radiologists avoid unnecessary biopsies. We used the PenRad imaging database to survey patients that had undergone a breast biopsy on a lesion that was also imaged by ultrasound. Inclusion criteria were age greater than 18, BIRADS 4 or 5 graded lesion, two orthogonal B-mode ultrasound images obtained, and a successful biopsy with documented final pathologic diagnosis. Additional exclusion criteria pertain to women lost to follow-up or those unable to be linked with a valid electronic medical record. A small number of patients had multiple lesions analyzed, either within the same breast or between both breasts. 500 lesions were surveyed and 478 met inclusion criteria. Images from qualifying lesions were analyzed by the AI software platform. The system only analyzes B-mode imaging and is meant to be used as an additional tool for diagnosis, not an independently operating diagnostic tool. It is important to keep this in mind, and this will be discussed further as we review the results. As you can see from a sample of the analysis tool, lesions are graded along a spectrum of benign, probably benign, suspicious, or malignant. For purposes of this study, benign and probably benign were considered benign cases in which a biopsy is not indicated by the software. Suspicious and malignant were considered lesions for which biopsy is recommended. A radiology fellow and two residents manually reviewed all cases for accuracy. Appropriate region of interest demarcation was checked, as an example of which is shown in the picture. We verified that each analyzed lesion corresponds to the lesion as identified in the original radiology report. Descriptive BIRADS imaging features from the original radiology report were recorded for each lesion. In the example here, this included irregular shape and complex echogenicity. Only information in the original radiology report was harvested for subgroup analysis of imaging findings. No secondary reclassification of imaging features was undertaken during this QA review. Finally, the pathologic diagnosis and relevant neoplasm grading, if applicable, were recorded. Here are our statistical methods. Stratification was done according to the final diagnostic and pathological reports at the time of study inclusion. Each category was analyzed to evaluate the system's sensitivity and specificity. 95% confidence intervals were calculated conservatively for each proportion utilizing the exact Klopper-Pearson interval. All proportion comparisons were done via a two-sided chi-square test. Here is the receiver operating characteristic curve for all lesions. The percent of area under the curve is 85. The software's overall sensitivity was 97% and specificity was 37%. I want to emphasize the limitations of this study in making comparisons about sensitivity given the retrospective design. By design, 
radiologist sensitivity in this cohort of patients is 100% because all lesions in the data set were biopsied. However, the specificity tells us that the system contraindicated biopsy as the clinical management in 37% of cases. This 37% represents the amount of potentially avoidable biopsies on benign lesions had this tool been used during diagnosis. Here is a breakdown of performance by age groups. The graph on the left shows the number of benign and malignant lesions distributed across the age range. As expected, there were more benign lesions in the younger population and more malignant lesions in the older population. The graph on the right demonstrates a similar performance across the age distribution. However, there is a higher specificity suggested in the younger age groups. This may reflect a higher prevalence of fibroadenomas in the group, which the system performs specifically well on. The graph here shows a distribution of the sizes for all lesions evaluated during the study. We specifically looked at lesions one centimeter or less, which can offer diagnostic challenges to breast radiologists, but which also have excellent survival outcomes when diagnosed appropriately. There were 187 lesions in this group, and the system had a 36% specificity. These tables break down the performance for both malignant and benign lesions according to the BIRAD score assigned by the radiologist. Again, it is important to remember that all lesions were biopsied, hence the 100% sensitivity and 0% specificity by the radiologist. The BIRADS 4 category includes lesions that were not assigned in A, B, or C subcategorization at the time of diagnosis. Breast imagers do not usually struggle with whether to recommend biopsy of 4B, 4C, or 5 grade lesions that have suspicious features such as irregular shape, indistinct angular or spiculated margins, or increased vascularity. The management of less suspicious 4A lesions can be more challenging. In this data set, approximately half of the BIRADS 4A lesions were suggested to be benign. Avoiding biopsy by downgrading less suspicious 4A lesions may prove to be the most clinically impactful use of this tool. This table represents the pathologic breakdown of all malignant lesions. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma was the most common subtype evaluated in this cohort. I would like to highlight that three of the six total missed cancers were actually ductal carcinoma in situ. Ultrasound is not the preferred modality for diagnosing ductal carcinoma in situ, as it usually does not present as a discrete mass. If used as intended within the entire clinical context, it is possible that these lesions may have more worrisome appearance on mammography or tomosynthesis. This slide shows the breakdown of performance for all lesions that were pathologically benign. I'd like to point out here the relatively high specificity with regards to fibroadenomas and fibrocystic changes. This may help to explain the software's higher specificity in younger patients, as alluded to earlier. This is a breakdown of performance by select imaging characteristics. I want to remind everyone that these descriptions are taken right from the original radiology report and there was no reclassification of lesion descriptions during analysis. Within these limitations, we can see that the system performed especially well with oval shapes and circumscribed margins. This is a list of the missed cancers. It is important to remember that this tool analyzes B-mode images only. It is meant to be a complementary tool to provide an additional data point to radiologists that can be evaluated within the entire clinical picture. When looking closer at the few missed cancers, we can see that two of the lesions had either internal or peripheral flow on color Doppler imaging, which could have raised further suspicion for biopsy. Let's look at some image examples. This is a 2.8 centimeter lesion that was diagnosed as a BIRADS-4 by the radiologist. It was correctly suggested to be benign.
2009 by the AI software and was ultimately demonstrated to be a fibroadenoma. This 0.5 centimeter lesion was diagnosed as a 4B by the radiologist. It was correctly suggested to be benign by the AI software and was ultimately demonstrated to be a fibroadenoma. This 1.4 centimeter lesion was also diagnosed as a 4B lesion by the radiologist. It was correctly suggested to be benign by the AI software and ultimately demonstrated to be fibrocystic changes. This 1.8 centimeter lesion was diagnosed as a 4C lesion by the radiologist. It was correctly suggested to be malignant by the AI software and ultimately demonstrated to be infiltrating ductal carcinoma. This 0.4 centimeter lesion was diagnosed as a 4B lesion by the radiologist. It was correctly suggested to be malignant by the AI software and ultimately demonstrated to be an infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Here is an example of one of the missed cancers. This is one of the two lesions that demonstrated flow on color Doppler. This 0.7 centimeter lesion was graded a 4B by the radiologist at the time of examination and ultimately proved to be infiltrating ductal carcinoma by pathology. Here's another example of a missed cancer. This 0.6 centimeter lesion was graded a 4 without further clarification by the radiologist at the time of examination. It ultimately proved to be a cribriform malignancy. Here are some of the limitations of our study. It only looked at biopsy lesions, therefore the evaluation of AI performance with regards to sensitivity is limited. Only B-mode ultrasound images were evaluated. Additional clinical information, mammographic findings, or Doppler diagnostic evaluation would be incorporated by radiologists when using this tool in actual clinical practice. No lesions were recharacterized during the analysis. Subgroup analysis for imaging features was restricted to descriptions used in the original radiology report. AI software can be a useful complementary tool for breast radiologists. Our results suggest that software like this could potentially reduce the number of unnecessary breast biopsies. AI software may be particularly useful in helping to avoid biopsies in small and low suspicion lesions. We would like to do retrospective examination on the software performance in conjunction with mammographic findings. We would also like to do a prospective evaluation of performance when used in clinical practice. Both of these studies could provide a more complete analysis of how a tool like this would function in actual clinical use.